response. Basically, the question that you have asked was a psychologist or a psychological perspective of a human behavior that is seen to be erratic, abnormal, or criminological. When op that Skinner's theory of operant behavior is being discussed, he was not actually looking into the criminological behavior or the criminology of the whole aspect. He was looking into the human behavior that was particularly to do with conditioning. People who can actually have anxieties, can have phobias, can have depression, can have all those factors where he was trying to help us to learn that the part of the brain can be then learned and unlearned about something. And that will allow you then to improve the behavior. So basically it was just like, can you actually apply some of the psychological methods to change a behavior that could be abnormal in one sense? But he was more looking for someone which was like a mental illness. So we believe that Skinner's model probably is not what we're looking at over the years. I think the basics of what we need to understand is the question that we are asking now, either it is to do with the gender-based violence or it is to do with harassment, it's to do with the sexual offending, rape, stalking, and child abuse. What we are looking at is an aspect of a mental state of the person, which is then falling into the bracket of what we call is a crime. So the relationship between criminology, psychology, or shall we say, a mental disorder and a crime is being questioned, which is being seen by the specialism of what we call as forensic psychology or forensic psychiatry. So I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist working in a highly secure system in the United Kingdom. And so I do have also worked around in Pakistan too. So forensic psychiatry basically is the specialist area which deals with people who have been known to have a mental disorder and now they have done offending. So there's a whole system that works with criminal justice system, prison system, and the psychological and the psychiatric aspects of why would that behavior be occurring? So what I'm just trying to help you to understand is that Skinner's operant behavior could be one method that could be applied in looking into what happens, but that will be a very naive concept to understand the pathology that we are seeing in the society. So let me start with starting with the psychological perspectives. Why are we seeing a behavior that is so gruesome or horrible and that is causing people to obviously feel what is the link between a victim and a perpetrator? Violence and aggression. So let's start with something like what is that causes and the question that you have asked is why is the perpetrator still doing this criminal act and is this the society or is it us that we are not aware about that? So it's a very kind of a simple question because the first thing is that violence and so we say aggression has got a very long standing history. And historically speaking, it is probably as long as when Abel and Cabell were brought to this world and so one kills in another. So it's not that the violence is something which is, so it is kind of predated historically. And you have to understand, even at that stage, the murder took place because it was to do with, because he, one of the brothers obviously feels that he got rejected, jealous, angry, and the violence happened and he kills his own brother. What we're probably trying to make around here is let's move on from all those centuries ago to come to our world. You have to understand that the social norms are contextually and socially derived collective experiences of appropriate behavior. So when you're going to see harmful social norms that include gender-based violence, they will include a couple of these things. For example, sexual purity, protecting family honor over women's safety, men's authority to discipline women and children. These are the social norms and the beliefs that when they go wrong in a society, then you'll begin to see what we know as a, what we call as a gender-based violence. So what has happened? I think over the time, changes happen in the social norms and personal beliefs that maintain and tolerate sexual violence and other forms of gender-based violence, particularly against women and children or women and girls, even men are involved. So what is actually, why is it that our society is finding it now more is because we are the society which have got the low resources and complex humanitarian settings. This is what I'm trying to explain to you is the sociological concept of violence that happens in our society. 
Now let's go back and see what generally other people have been talking about. So there are theories which are now in motion. For example, one theory that probably is it's been seen quite a lot is called, this is Travis's Hershey's theory. It's called a social control theory. What does it say? It says that generally people will conform to social norms due to strong social bonds. I've got my father, I've got my mother, I've got my grandparents, we got a religion, we are supposed to abide by that. So moral ethics and codes and the beliefs that we've been giving to your family for years if people are going to conform to those social norms, you will find that they will be able to have the same beliefs. But what happens then? That conversely, they engage in delinquent acts. And when will they do that? When the bonds are weak or broken. So what has happened in our society? You are not finding attachments. You're not finding commitments. You're not finding involvements. You're not having beliefs. I'm not going to be a preacher today because this conversation is not going to be completely going into the religious code. This is for the general public to understand. But this recent case that has happened, sadly, which has happened in Islamabad, and we probably will keep it notional. Why is it that the people have been shocked with this? Is because they're suddenly being woken up from something that they thought is not going to happen to them. Not that they do not know that this is not going to happen. So the question around here is, when you find violence like what you've seen, what are the causes? Why is it being sustained? Why is it being perpetrated? Because you have to look at the simple, basic five factors. Has the person got mental illness or a mental disorder? Is there a history of drug and alcoholism? Is there a history of controlling behavior? Is there an excessive need for attention? And is there feelings of low worth? That's how we study the aggressor. So if you're asking the question, why is this criminality being perpetrating? Is because you have done two things which were not happening before in our society. But I'm not going to compare the West with us. In the last five or ten years, there has been explosion. The nudity of the social media and the exploitation from even the media and the news. The people are actually on their fingertips can get access to the things which can either alter their beliefs their attitudes, their behavior, and their social norms about the society without being checked. So what we are probably trying to do at the moment is like a knee-jerk reaction. What has happened in the capital is not happening in Kasur, but because in Kasur, it was a completely xenomorphous case. As someone who actually got raped, someone who got murdered, there was another aggressive psychopath with a ring working around and Kalkal Kir. So the whole country gets into chaos and sexual offenders are being looked at. The person gets hanged. People have got their grief sorted out and the world moves on. But nothing was done because you have not changed anything. So when you are asking this question, why is it society is seeing it? Because you have to actually see, you're going to have the reform of everything else. And the other thing is, when we, people like us or the researchers or the psychiatrists or the people who are working on this team, they do not go on anecdotal cases. Zanimumba and maybe let's give the name of this Nur Mukaddam, these cases are just one or two cited cases. Unless the society has to learn or Pakistan has to learn, you have to go on a generalized law. So it means rural, urban, Karachi, Sin, Blue, you have to take everything in account. Now, the case around here is you and me will go to Balochistan or you will have to go to KPK. There will be so many cases of sexual offending. I mean, more horrendous than this one. It's just because you're not interviewing me and just because people are not arranging you more or just because my dad is not a diplomat. I'm not getting against that. I'm just only telling you what we need to understand around here is that this thing has been going on, sadly, because so many cultures, norms, norms, patterns have changed. So the question that you were trying to ask me, and I think I probably got a very answer to that. The question was that, is it because the society or the human brain at large doesn't recognize it, or is there something else? So my answer to you this question is that it's not that we cannot recognize it. If we would not recognize it, we would not be talking to each other. Because every other person thinks, could that be me? But none of the people think, could I be Mr. Zahir, the book trader? Now, that man has got a mental illness. The man with a history of substance misuse. He's got a long history of controlling. He's lost history of a lot of history that tells about what he was trying to do. 
you know, he has completely misreported about his qualifications. So you're looking at someone who was trying to tell you there were enough warning signals in a character that was overpassed because people were not trying to look into that. Why would you assign a teacher in the school without looking into, in this country, it is called CBI. You go to the criminal record, see whether this person should be able to work with children. No such regulation exists. No such regulation exists about who is psychologist and who is not. No such regulation exists where the substance misuse has been done. You can't blame back. So I'll tell you what, there's a huge work that has been done where we try to find out what we call as important to your question is why people keep on repeating violent offending. And there is a theory which is called RVO, which is called a repeated violent offending. And it is proportionate with what we call as IRR, which is called increased relative risk. So the question you very nicely ask is, if this is what is happening, which is not that society has changed, but there is going to be an increased risk, what are the factors that we should be looking for if we have to find out if this is going to happen again? So identifying factors, which is a story you, is these things if present, you're expecting that violence will happen again. And what are the things? These are the few four points. If, if there is an offending career that begins before the age of 14, there's a highly prediction that later violent offending and later longer criminal career will happen. If you're going to look this theory into the case of Nurmukha, then you have to go on back and see that person had a history of even assaulting his mom. And that even happened in this country. So they did the right thing. Obviously, he was asked to please leave the country. Otherwise, he had to go through the whole course of treatments that we do here in this country. It means you get detained. You go in especially forensic hospitals. Court gets involved. You do not get even a glimpse of getting nearer to the kids or to women. So that was the part that is meeting. Then there's another, what we call the repeated violent offending factor. If there is a history where you find that there is a long criminal career or there's a long history of violence, that means we know that the history of violence in the past will always predict violence in the future, which was in this case that I just determined to you. Then you have to also see that it's happening in our society. If there's a drug use in adolescence, if there's a gang membership, if there's an antisocial behavior in young age, you're going to get an antisocial personality disorders traits in an adult. That means you've got a very good chemistry of people committing more crime. And last but not the least, again, in this case, if you have a history of kidnapping, blackmailing, and stalking, they are associated scientifically with homicide and rape. So let's reflect on our society and the major cases that have happened in Pakistan. Harassment, domestic violence, rape, sexual funding, which is happening in children too, you would find that even the most famous case that Pakistan society has seen was of Kasur. And that child that actually got hanged was not going to be excluded to see, did he have a learning disability or not, which could have then caused the sexual panic. It was a completely different way of looking into it. You know, so there are different factors. So I think I'm probably coming back to what you wanted to ask us, that why are we finding this? Because we are finding this for three reasons. The social control theory tells us that our people are not conforming to the social norms and strong social norms. I think, let me add here, we cannot rely on all the foreign experts who have been saying, who are not from our culture. So I would respect Travish, I would respect operant condition of Skinners, and I will also respect the social theory of Clifford Shah. But the question is, they are not from Pakistan, and they are not Muslims. So we must add our religious values into it. Fried Eye and or anybody else or Newton and Isaac were great men, but they were not from. So, you know, endogenously speaking, what we're trying to say is that religion has to come into play. You have to understand the fabric of the religion and the social ethics of course are actually being totally shattered away in our society. You can't just do that. So you need to stick to your beliefs, so your social norms and your social bonds. Then you have to use the science that has been applied all over the world. Try to make institutes 
try to create wherever these people will go. Now that person that we are talking in Islam about, just a simple question. If this man got a history of substance misuse, which he admits to himself, and the fact that how horrendously he was trying to kick all year after decapitating, that means how can on the earth this be possible that you have not got a psychiatrist to go and assess his mental state? If he was having a substance misuse, I can tell you with my 40 years of experience, people will have withdrawals in the next 24 to 40 hours. If this man hasn't had withdrawals, and you can still see him walking into the corridors of courts, that means how on the earth the biochemistry of drug is gone, unless you're provided with something. Because there's no way, not even my house officer would be able to. And so there means that you have to see the issues that we have got of helping is a proper assessment, a proper intervention. Then you need to have institutes we should look after. Any sexual offending happening, even in the countries like Somalia, I believe, they will have a sexual offending register. So tell me something, even when you have the big case and Pakistan government had also made parliament rules by harassment act and domestic violence acts, and they're yet to actually form that which are basics of forensic care. If you have committed a violence act like this, that person needs to be seen by a forensic psychiatrist that needs to be analyzed for that. The court has to have a forensic report. This man should go to a prison which should have a, not a mental health wing, but a psychiatric wing. And then there should be a psychiatric placement where this man should be treated for the rest of the life until the society is safe for him. These are the basics of what happened. Now comes to your last question, deterrent theory. Were you to punish him, were you to obviously chop his head off, do it in public, is that going to make people not to do it? Well, the religion says you better do it. So I'm not going against that because God knows more than my or my other generations will ever find out. So the religion tells us that sometimes the capital punishment allowed in front of the people is a deterrent. Although this has been challenged in the past, but we are not going to argue the religion here, but we're still saying punishment. But before you do the punishment, you also try to see if there's an element of treatment for the person who has been doing it because he was not able to understand what he was doing was wrong. And if he knew it was wrong, he would not have done it. That's a McNaughton's rule. So I think I have probably tried to explain to you why in our society the violence is happening. Why is it so that people's beliefs and why is it that we have been at the moment contaminated by so many of the simple rules that a good society should have and we are not being checked we are not being regulated we all believe that we can actually get away from that too that allows the violence and the crime and the crime we to commit deterrence is good concepts are good beliefs have to be made and scientific methods must be applied when crimes and violence which are related to sexual violence harassment child rape is happening only then you will be able to see, will the society be able to understand? So my partial answer to your question is half the society is sleeping. Half the society believes that they are actually far more knowledgeable than anybody else. And a quarter of us are probably still going to do this crime because we know we're going to get away with that. It's one of the sad stories, but I think we need to actually analyze it. And there are so many ways to do it. What you are going to do is also going to help the cause. If what we have discussed is actually going to go and can be seen and heard by people who can actually make changes in our society, in our um, criminal justice system, in our treatment methods, and then awareness of the society, we've got a very good chance of causing people to come to the dialogue to try to understand why the cases like this, which you call GBV, happen so commonly.